Hey guys, in today's video I want to talk about Adrian Manarino who just took out Ben Shelton in the third round of the Australian Open and I picked Shelton to play Djokovic. I thought it would be a match that's super interesting, but I've got to be honest with you. Actually, the Shelton Manarino match was one of the most interesting matches that I've ever seen. Now let me tell you why. It was a contrast in styles. Here we have Shelton who's the typical modern player that plays with a tremendous amount of athleticism. And on the other hand, we have Manarino who plays more of the old school type of tennis. And what do I mean by old school? Well, it's not that Manarino is not athletic. He's an unbelievable athlete, but he doesn't require as much athleticism to hit his forehands and his backhands compared to the modern players. Now, of course, on the serve, you don't have the luxury of being able to absorb the pace of the incoming ball because that's what Manorino is. He is a counter puncher, a la Marcelo Rios or Miloslav Medchir from way back in the day. On the ground strokes, you can use the pace of the incoming ball to create power. On the serve, on the other hand, you cannot do that. And Manorino has an excellent serve and he loads the serve very aggressively and is able to serve with a lot of power. But that's not what makes him so tricky to break. See, Manorino uses some of the old school tactics on the serve that you don't see nowadays anymore. I recently made a video titled The Geometry of the Tennis Court where I talk about some things that you can do on the court to use the geometry to your advantage. And this video is gonna come out in February. It's already available on intuitivetennis.com. But in any case, Manorino uses different positioning in his service games to his advantage. But it's not only that, he uses different type of spins on his serve. He slices the serve, kicks it, uses different speeds, is able to serve extremely fast, but also is able to serve slower with a lot of action. And that can throw the opponent off, especially a young opponent like Shelton. See, when I made my draw predictions, I should have first seen this happening because I know that young players struggle with guys like Manorino. See, not only is he a counter puncher, but he uses different spins, different slices. He hit maybe the best volley drop shot that I've seen since Beno Appere hit that legendary drop shot volley on the run that was flying next to his head and then bounced on the other side, came back over. Manorino did something different with side spin. He came to the net and sliced the ball like this. The guy has unbelievable hands, very reminiscent of someone like Johnny Mack. And a while back on my private membership site, someone asked me whether Manorino possesses the correct fundamentals on his forehand, because something that I teach on the forehand is to achieve a sufficient lag. For you guys that don't know, you can check out some of my videos on the lag. But basically, if you're looking at me playing from behind, the racket has to lag at least two here. But what you see from high level players is that from the forward acceleration, the racket actually lags further behind. So the tip of the racket points behind the player. So when you watch Manorino play in real time, it appears that he's not achieving much of a lag both on his forehand and his backhands because his strokes are so short. He doesn't take much of a backswing. He doesn't often finish his strokes either. He's very much using that pace of the incoming ball to his advantage. So when I received this question, I said, I don't know the answer to your question. I need to do some research. So after conducting the research on Manorino's forehand, even though it appears that he's not achieving a sufficient lag, he is getting a lag like everybody else on tour. So despite the fact that he's not loading his body as much as other players, he's not getting airborne as much as other players, he doesn't finish his strokes sometimes as much as other players. Manorino has such fast hands that despite the lack of loading, he still reaches a high level lag on both his forehand and his backhand, where for example, on his forehand, if you slow-mo his forehand, in the beginning of the forward phase, the tip of his racket actually points slightly behind his body. I will say not as much as other players. If you look at Alcaraz or Rune or Sinner, the racket is going way back. His doesn't go quite as far back, but nevertheless, he does have a good lag on his forehand. Now, one thing that people often talk about with Manorino is his tension, and if you go on the internet, It'll tell you that he plays with uh, nine kilograms, which is 19 pounds. But I wanted to make sure I got the right data, so I contacted the GOAT of tennis equipment, Jonas from the Tennis Nerd YouTube channel. He told me that he actually plays with 10 kilos, which is 22 pounds. Still an incredibly low tension. But if you take into account 
what I just told you, the fact that Manorino doesn't use his body as violently as some of the other players. He relies more on the pace of the incoming ball. It makes sense that it would play with a low tension like that. Now I will say though that he does play with alu power which is a string that responds tremendously well to low tension. This is not the case for all strings. And he also plays with a racket that's quite heavy. It's a Babolat Aero 2013, the regular 300 gram version which was customized and it's around 330 grams. Again, this info comes from a tennis nerd. So the fact that he's able to play with that low of a tension, 10 kilograms, has to do with the fact that he's playing with alu power and he's also playing with a racket that's a little bit heavier. But see, what I find so beautiful about the game of tennis that you don't have to play like everybody else does. You can play with your own style. And it's beautiful to see that even in 2024, this type of tennis still works. A 35-year-old Adrian Manarino, who just reached his highest ranking at the age of 35 at 20 in the world, is able to beat an up-and-coming superstar, Ben Shelton, who has potential to do real big things in tennis. So this is all the proof that you need, that you don't need to play the same way that everybody else plays. There is still room for style in tennis. And for me, it's fun to watch different styles compete against each other. It's not so fun to watch tennis where everybody plays exactly the same. So when Manarino plays Djokovic, I do think that Djokovic will beat him. It's one of those weird matchups where Djokovic could win in three easy sets or it could be a nightmare match for him. I remember a few years back, Djokovic almost losing to Gilles Simon, who doesn't play exactly like Manarino, but it's in that category of counterpuncher guys that Novak sometimes struggles against. To make things worse, San Manorino is also lefty, which makes him more difficult to break and tougher to deal with from the baseline. And guys, if you watch my Australian Open picks video where I predicted the entire draw on the men and women, I'm gonna give you a quick update on how I'm doing. And let's start with the men. And I'm actually doing really well. And check this out. I got Djokovic right here against Echeverry. This I got wrong, I already explained that I probably should have gone the other way. Fritz, I got right. I got Tsitsipas right. I got Sinner right. I got Kachanov right. I got Dimenao right. And I got Rublev right. Pretty impressive, right? Well, not so fast because uh, take a look at the women's draw. This is an absolute disaster. This bottom half of the draw had so many seeds going out. I did pick Fernandez and Sabalenka to uh, meet in the semis. And the one good pick that I made was Andreva. I did pick her to go to the quarters. She's still in it. She's a super exciting player to watch. But if you take a look at the amount of seeds they have lost, I'll just give you a few examples. Look at Kostiuk against Timofeva. Uh, fourth round. What about French going into the fourth round? Who would have thought that? Of course, golf is the big favorite in this part of the draw to go through. But how about Diane Perry? And how about Anisimova going to the fourth round? So on the bottom half of the women's draw, a lot of upsets. But on the top half, I'm still doing pretty good. Iga is still in it. Ostapenko is still in it. I did pick her. Kalinskaya is still in it. Zhang. But take a look at this. You see who I got as champion? Rybakina. And she lost. And maybe the best match of the whole tournament it was that 22-20 third set tiebreaker. And if you haven't seen that match, I highly recommend that you watch the highlights. That right there is an advertisement for WTA tennis, the way that these players were saving match points and the rally quality was outstanding. To me, so far, that was the most exciting match in the entire Australian Open draw. 